Hi, dear sisters. I'm Patty Mansfield. I work with a team of wonderful women. We sponsor two things each year, the Day of Refreshment at the end of June and the Women's Retreat at the end of January in Lafayette. We welcome you. We're so disappointed that we don't have a full five hours together like we usually do, but we're trusting that in these 45 minutes, the Lord is going to enable us to communicate to you some of the graces that we believe that he has for you. Many, many months ago, the team came upon this theme for today, fearfully, wonderfully made from Psalm 139. That Psalm is called by Father Cantula Mesa, God's X-ray, because it speaks of how the Lord knows us. He sees us. He follows when we're standing and sitting and sleeping. He even reads our thoughts from afar. So that means that the Lord has been watching us carefully during this pandemic. He knows what we've been through. And the verse in particular that gave us our theme is from verse 13 and 14, Lord, you formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you that I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. And so as we move through this short time with you today, we hope to communicate to you God's intimate love for you, his great pleasure in having created you a woman, and the graces that he wants to release in you, perhaps some inner healing of low self-esteem or self-worth, and to bring you into a greater fullness of the power of his spirit. What will we be doing? Well, I'm going to invoke the Holy Spirit. Then you're going to hear testimonies about what the baptism in the spirit has meant in the lives of several women. CCRNO exists to promote this grace of the release of the Holy Spirit, known in the scripture as the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So you're going to hear testimonies and you'll hear a lovely teaching by Janice Charbonnet, which she has entitled, Dear Jesus, It's Swimsuit Season. Following that, there'll be a time, about 15 minutes, of ministry using the charismatic gifts. That means that you're going to hear some singing in tongues a charism mentioned in the scripture, whereby we're praising God and we're interceding beyond what we know with our own understanding. You're going to hear prophetic words. You might hear some exhortation based on a vision or an image that one of the team members uh, received. So I'm going to ask you to be very open, even if you've never been involved in this kind of ministry before. Then we're going to call on the Holy Spirit with a beautiful song that is very dear to our women's retreat team, Overshadow Me, written by our dear friend, Dr. Sean Tobin. Then they'll be, we'll be telling you about some upcoming events and finally going forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, as we were preparing online for this online virtual day, we had the whole team on a Zoom meeting. And during that time, I received a prophetic word. And I believe it's for all of us. And this is what the Lord was, was saying to us. He said, did I not tell you that if only you believe, you would see the glory of God? Did I not tell Martha these same words just before I raised her brother Lazarus from death to life? And I say to you, if only you would believe, you would see my glory in your lives. I want to bring you deeper. I want to bring you deeper into the things of the Spirit. I want to bring you deeper into humility, into repentance. But I also want to bring you higher, higher into my heavenly realms, where you will begin to see things as I see them. Because my intervention is not always sweet and light. Sometimes my intervention is to cut away sin, to cut away falsehood, to cut away those things that'll rob you of my peace and joy and rob you of eternal life. So the Lord said, I say to you, my sisters, come with me deeper and come with me higher, higher into the heavenly realms where Mary and all the saints and all the angels are waiting for you. So let's begin, sisters. If, you, if you're willing, put your hands up like this, or you might put them over your heart. And I'm going to pray the traditional Catholic prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen.
In January 2017, I attended a Life in the Spirit seminar. I was broken and desperate, but very hopeful. God did not disappoint. My life changed that weekend, and I knew I could not go back to my old life. I was able to receive God's love for the first time. I began to long for God, and I desired to know God more deeply. And now I'm on a spiritual journey, still longing for Him and desiring Him. What has my baptism in the Spirit done for me? Um, it's given me what feels almost like a physical relationship with Christ. Such an intense um, experience of Him in prayer, but also in times um, when I have needed comfort and solace that I feel as though I could reach out and I could touch Him. Um, it's not something that I ever could have imagined was possible, so I know that it doesn't come from me or from my imagination. It is a real sense of his physical presence with me. Um, it's amazing and it's life-changing. I was baptized in the Spirit during my first CCRNO women's retreat in 2017 and returned home changed. For the first time in my life, I felt spiritually alive as if there was a fire burning deep within me and I wanted to share it with everyone. I craved adoration, praying the rosary, and just becoming more knowledgeable about my faith. Um, this experience flowed over to my husband and my children and drew us closer to one another and deepened our faith as a family as well. And now, years later when I get caught up in the world and have times of uh, spiritual drought, um, I remember that feeling of just being fully alive and I'm drawn back into prayer. At a time in my life when I was seeking to know God more, seeking to know who I was more in God's eyes, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it really was the encounter of God's love poured into my heart through the Holy Spirit. And since that moment, my life has been changed forever. I am able to encounter God more through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, seeing the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and really giving me courage knowing God's intimate love for me to step out in my life and be the person that God has created me to be. And it's been through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit that I've been empowered to be able to live that life that God created me for. Hi, my name is Nicole Tobin, and I just wanted to share that I had the most beautiful experience at the Life in the Spirit seminar at this year's Women's Retreat. Um, where I experienced the healing love of God the Father in such a profound and beautiful way that has truly transformed my life from the inside out and has had a ripple effect in my day-to-day -day living, in my ministry, in my family. And I am just so grateful that I was there at that place at that time and that the Lord was able to just work in this place. It was a mighty, mighty anointing um, with fierce women of God. If you have a chance, you have to be there next year. You know, one of the things I have noticed about myself is that I have a deep desire to be beautiful. I mean, that's just that desire for beauty that goes like deep down into the center of who I am. And even when my husband tells me I look beautiful, like as pleased as I am, there's still a small part of me that isn't fully satisfied. And I think that's common to a lot of women and it's something that can steal our peace. So whether that's the number on the scale when we wake up in the morning or whether we're having a good hair day or a bad hair day or if we like the outfit that we're wearing, that kind of stuff can affect our mood and it tends to follow us through the day, um, irritating us, taking away our peace, changing how we see ourselves and our circumstances and how we interact with the world around us. And to be honest, that used to bug me. It used to bug me that that was a struggle for me because I used to have these conversations with myself like, gosh, Janice, you know, it's just looks 
it doesn't matter. And you know what? A truly holy woman wouldn't have that much concern for her body anyway, right? Actually wrong. A truly holy woman would have all kinds of concern about her body, but maybe not in the way that that sounds. So in praying about this over the years, I just want to share with you some thoughts, um, some conversations I've had with the Lord that have been really fruitful and um, very freeing in the hopes that maybe it offers you some freedom as well. One of the key points for me was being able to recognize that there was a thirst. So I think in the spiritual life, it's important that when we come across these areas in our heart where there seems to be a lack of freedom, where there seems to be a thirst that is bottomless and can't be satisfied. So for a woman that might be the desire to be loved, the desire to be heard, to be understood, to be seen, um, even the desire for attention. You know, those are common feminine desires. So when you stumble across that in your heart, the key is to remember that those desires were likely placed there by the Lord because satisfaction is only possible through Him. So simple, but so profound for me. So if there's some kind of thirst in me that seems insatiable, it's probably because God put it there. And if I go someplace else other than the Lord to get it satisfied, it leaves me feeling unsettled and thirsty. Another way of thinking about that would be um, an image came to mind of shackles and tethers. So what's the difference between a shackle and a tether? Well, both tie, right? But in very different ways. So a shackle would restrict your movement. It would enslave you. It would keep you stuck in one place. But a tether keeps us attached and following the one who is leading. I think for many of us, beauty can be like that. It can either be a shackle that keeps us enslaved, or it can be a tether that when we attach it to Christ, it keeps him close to us. It keeps us close to him so that we can hear him speaking to us, hear him reassuring us of our beauty and of our worth and of our dignity. Our desire for beauty was meant to be a tether and not a shackle. Making that realization helped me morph my thinking from, gosh, I wish I didn't have a struggle with this and I, I wish it wasn't important to me, to, Jesus, if you placed this desire in me, then would you help me see myself the way that you see me? And would you tell me that I am beautiful in a way that makes me fully satisfied? That's when things really started to open up. One of the areas that I was led to pray about over the years was the Garden of Eden. Because if we're talking about body image, I think it's important to go back to the um, God's original design for the body. First of all, have you ever thought about why God chose to make bodies in the first place? Because, I mean, he didn't have to, right? He could have made us spirits, just like the angels. But no, he chose to make us embodied creatures. So through the teachings of theology of the body, the church has this gorgeous message for us. The idea is that we were given bodies so that we could make visible, invisible truths about God, so that we would be able to image for the world truths about the Lord. So in the garden, the idea that came to my head was Adam would have been able to look at Eve across the garden and his first thought looking at her body would have been, oh, would you look at that body? Every time I look at her, she reminds me through the design of our physiology that I am to be open and receptive to the Lord just the way her body is designed. Eve would have been able to look at Adam and her first thought would have been, gosh, would you look at him? His body reminds me every time I see it that God is my ultimate provider, protector, and source of life. Is that not more beautiful and more freeing than simply how we look in a pair of skinny jeans, right? So speaking of clothes and shopping, I love to go shopping with my mother. She's just like a safe person to bring, you know? Um, but she's thousands of miles away, so it doesn't happen very often anymore. 
So now I've gotten into the habit of bringing the Blessed Mother with me. And so when I go into the change room to try on clothes, I ask her to help me see myself the way Jesus sees me, the way that she knows Jesus sees me. And that's been really helpful. You know, an image that also comes to mind is, um, you know, movies that have wedding scenes in them and the bride-to-be is having a fitting of the wedding gown. So she's behind the fitting room curtain and the mother of the bride is on the other side in the waiting room waiting for the curtain to be pulled back. Excited, can't wait to see her daughter. So the curtain pulls back and out comes the bride-to-be and the camera always shows the reaction of the mother of the bride, right? And what is that reaction? It's always awe and delight at the vision before her, at the beauty of her daughter before her. That is how the Blessed Mother sees you. She loves you. And when she sees your body, she's delighted at the unique way that you reflect the glory of God to the world. She's thrilled with that. You know, Mary is our model in this area in a most practical way. The fact that God chose to take on a body inside the body of a woman is endlessly fascinating to me. And he knew that that was the plan from the beginning of time. And so in the beginning, when he was designing a woman's body, he was designing the blueprint of his future tabernacle. Mind-blowing to me. There's no doubt in my mind that Mary would have been able to look at her reflection and just say, praise God, because she would have been so grateful for the gift of her body that was able to bring Christ into the world, that was able to feed and nurture and care for Jesus. You know, our bodies are also meant to bring Jesus into the world through the actions of our hands and our feet and even the way that we are designed, like we talked about, about the Garden of Eden. So the way that we're made, whether that's the shape of our noses or the width of our shoulders or our height or the eye color that God chose for us, those are all God's choices for us. And he looks at us the same way that in Genesis, he looks at all of creation and he says, it is good, it is good. And yet many of us are stuck in this place of being at war with our bodies. You know? you know, There's an author named Ingrid Trobisch, and she says that to be at war with our bodies is to be at war with the Creator. You know, One year, um, as the months were going on and they're creeping towards summer and bathing suit season is right around the corner, and I can feel this, um, you know, tension starting to arise in my heart. So I'm praying about this and I'm just like, oh Lord, I just, I want to stay in a peaceful place on the pool deck when I'm chasing the kids around the pool, right? I just want to stay in this place of peace. And I felt like Jesus was inviting me, Janice, would you give me your bathing suit season? Would you make an offering of your bathing suit season to me? So every time that summer I was on the pool deck and I started to feel this ache, this thirst, that's the prayer that I would say in my heart, Jesus, I offer you my bathing suit season. It was really redeeming and kind of healing. You know, um, it's also changed how I take care of myself. Um, we need to be thankful for our bodies and the way that they're made and take care of them the way that we would take care of our tabernacles. Um, we need to take a balanced approach to food and exercise so that we can maintain our health and continue to do the will of God that he has set out for us and the mission that he would like us to accomplish. So as we get older and our bodies change, I think we have a choice. We can either stay frustrated with the realities of aging and stay shackled in this place of longing for our youth and regretting the changes that we're seeing when we look in the mirror, or we can take that natural longing for beauty 
and we can tether it to Christ. And we can ask him to transform our minds the way it says in the book of Romans so that we can see ourselves the way that he sees us. You know, Mary was but a thin veil of Christ inside of her. That is the kind of beauty that is ageless and deep and lasting. When we're talking about beauty and body image, I'm always reminded of the woman at the well. She was so thirsty. She had to work so hard to get her thirst satisfied. I mean, thank God for indoor plumbing, right? <laughs> um, but every day she had to schlep that bucket to the well in the heat in order to get her thirst satisfied. I think for many of us, beauty can be like that. It can be this insatiable thirst. So can we meet Jesus at the well who offers us life-giving water? He was able to quench the thirst of the woman at the well to such an extent that she didn't even need the well anymore. Scripture says she left her bucket behind because she found for herself Jesus, who was an endless fountain of water for all of her thirsts. You know, it struck me the other day that the Garden of Eden had no well. It only had rivers of life-giving water that were free and always accessible. I don't think we were ever meant to have to work this hard to get our thirsts satisfied. Jesus offers us life-giving water. I believe that endless desires need bottomless fountains. Jesus is an endless fountain. So my prayer for you is that you can bring your ideas of beauty to the Lord, to let him redeem them for you, and that you can pray with me this offering to the Lord so that we can say back to him, Jesus, I give you my body that was given up for you. Hello, dear sisters in Christ, and welcome to our time of ministry. I want to just thank Janice for that amazing presentation that she gave about how we're supposed to be seen through the lens of the Lord and how the Lord just shared his heart with you, and you shared that with us. So thank you, Janice, for that presentation. This whole day is formed around the scripture, Psalm 139, that says, You formed my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you for fearfully and wonderfully have you made me. It says, marvelous. Some interpretations give marvelous are your works. So today we're honing in on that theme that we are made fearfully and wonderfully and all of the other things that the scripture tells us about how we are to be as women who walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. The scripture tells us that we're God's masterpiece. We're clothed with strength and dignity. We are to be created for such a time as this, but to stand firm and to let nothing move us. And so today, as we move into this time of ministry, we want to begin as we begin all things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we just come to you, Lord. We stand before you. We ask you to see us. We ask you to just pour out your spirit upon us for this time of ministry. Lord, we ask you 
to anoint us again, to stir into flame what you've already given in baptism and in our confirmation. Lord, we offer this time of praise. It says, we will praise you because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We praise you, Lord, in this time. And so I just ask you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, to set apart this time, this space, to praise God. We ask you to join us right now to face the sanctuary, to lift your hands to the Lord, as the scripture says, and to give alleluia and all praise to God. Thank Friends, I'm just sensing that um, this may be the first time that you're hearing us pray in tongues or that you're hearing that phenomenon. And just to remind you that St. Paul refers to it in Scripture, the New Testament is filled with praying in tongues. And even the upper room where Mary was, that was um, part of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I had this thought, if I came into that upper room after the wind blew and after the tongues of fire came down and I heard all the apostles and Mary speaking in tongues, she probably would have hauled me aside by the arm and just gently explained to me what was going on. And so just to encourage you to um, ask Mary to release this gift in you as well. Amen. Amen. You know, sisters, as uh, Janice was explaining, Mary wanting to teach us and show us four months ago when we came up with this theme, Fearlessly and Wonderfully Made, and I took it to prayer, I had an image, and the image that I had was a father walking his beautiful daughter up as a bride to the altar. And she was just radiant. And as they got up to the altar, the father lifts her veil. And for the first time, her beloved sees her radiant face on the day of their wedding. And there's a little bit behind and she's just beaming. And I thought of our father wanting to unveil our beauty that the that our bridegroom sees and, and brings forth our true beauty. And our mother is right there with us. And she's remembering and seeing just as we're clothed that she wants us to be clothed in, her, in that wedding garment of simplicity and trust in a total abandonment and surrender and in, in, uh, in with a confidence and a fearlessness to go forth in that beauty that you created to be. And the I felt the Lord giving me the scripture for today was from Song of Songs and it's in chapter two. And I wanna read it to you. It says, as a lily among thorns, so is my beloved among women. And that's our bridegroom speaking to us. And then the bride says, he brings me into the banquet hall and his emblem over me is his love. And I just felt the spirit saying to us, you are the lily in my heart. And I am setting a banquet table before you so that you may feast on the choicest fruits and wines of my spirit. And I'm inviting you personally to come and enter in. For I desire to transform you and to unveil your true beauty, the one I have created you to be and have seen from all times. It is my Father's heart wanting to unveil you. And it is my love, the love that pours forth from my spirit that transforms you. And love that will sustain you and satisfy you and unveil your true beauty and it is my love that you that will give you true peace and security mm. it's my love that will open your eyes to the truth of who you truly are it is my love that will fill you with boldness and courage and zeal to walk my beloved daughters as the one i've created you to be to walk as my mother in humility and gentleness and love but with a confidence and a conviction and a courage in my power that's going to sustain you through life For my banner over you is my love and you are my lily among thorns mm -hmm. and for you I have prepared a banquet table now come and feast 
feast and let me unveil your beautiful face and let all see the glory of my kingdom, my life upon you. So let's just receive that word, dear sister. Yes. Enter, into yes. enter back yes. into, into this yes. word. For the Father and the Son are calling us in a spirit, and they want to uh, unveil your true beauty, our true beauty. So one of the most precious gifts any one of us can receive is the gift of the love of God poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And it's this grace of the love of God poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that we also call being baptized in the Spirit that is the gift that we're praying for every one of you. And I've been thinking recently of how simple, short prayers and move the heart of God. Mm -hmm. One of those simple short prayers that I've been praying now for over 50 years is just this, and I give it to you today, sisters, to say from wherever you are following, following this program, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Mm -hmm. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Because it's this personal, intimate knowledge of Jesus himself. And then his love poured into our hearts through this grace of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It transforms everything. It's not that we all of our problems are solved or that we've lost all the weight we want to lose or that, you know, our hair turned out just the, No, it's not that. It's that assurance that God himself <laughs> loves us. That's the grace we're praying for for you today. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I just really sense the Lord wants us to know right now that he sees us and that he's always seen us and that he's always loved us and through every stage of our lives. Even when we were little girls, he delighted mm -hmm. in us. And even when we were teenagers and we were looking a little awkward, he still delighted in us and he still delights in us today. No matter where we are, no matter what we look like, the Lord is saying, I delight in you because of the way I made you. The Lord is saying, I made the feminine heart. I made the nurturing heart. And it is your heart that I call in this our day and time to come forth and to receive my love and to be assured of my love, to walk in power and authority because it is my love in your nurturing heart that will heal the world, says the mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I keep hearing the word freedom, just freedom, freedom, that the Lord desires freedom for us, that this is, if this is an area where you feel like you are shackled, that the Lord desires to set you free in this area, and not just freedom for its own sake, but freedom so that we can walk in union with Him, and that we can be more obedient to the Lord, so that His will can be accomplished in your life, and in the lives of everyone that you interact with um 
if there's an image that comes to mind for you that somehow symbolizes freedom. For me, that's a little girl running on the beach in her bathing suit and just complete joy, skipping through the waves with not a care in the world. That to me is the image that comes to mind when I think freedom. Do you have an image that comes to mind when the Lord says freedom to you and that's what he desires for you? Ask Mary to just take you by the hand to whatever that image is and have the Lord speak to you there to, to just impart freedom to you so that you can walk with wild, joyful abandon in the plan that God has for you. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Come. Janice affirming that I just felt the Lord was in that unveiling he was unveiling and removing veils that we placed or have been placed on us of intimidation that maybe we've got in a low self-esteem that we maybe received from words that have been spoken to us and then and then they start to cover us and they keep us bound and the Lord saying, no no I'm lifting that off of you I'm mm -hmm. lifting that off that mm -hmm. See the beauty of my daughter. Those are not true. And I'm giving you confidence and courage. I feel a new boldness and this the fire of the of the love of his heart, the father's heart. His love is like a fire burning off all these false things. So receive that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord, we praise you, Jesus, for this time of ministry, Lord. We thank you for giving us this platform that we could praise and honor you, Lord, that this word can go forth to more people than could have ever attended the Day of Refreshment in Metairie, Louisiana, where we can be across the world now praising God because God's word will go forth. So as we close our time of ministry right now, we just give praise, glory, honor, and thanks to you, almighty God, for calling our hearts together. Even though we're miles apart, Lord, you can call our hearts together Amen. in solidarity and in unity, coming to the, to the knowledge of that you made us in a unique and wonderful way. And that we can rejoice and praise you for the very way that you made us because you are the creator of the universe. Lord, we ask you to see us this day, to give us a new love for you and a new love for ourselves in the way that you see us. And we thank you, Lord, on this day for giving us the most fearfully and wonderfully made woman on the face of the earth, which was Amen. Our Lady. Amen. And so we honor ourselves in honoring her today. And we look to her the way you look to her. You look to her for nourishment, for strength, for encouragement. And we look to you, Mary, today in that way. And we give thanks to God for giving her to us as our gift. We praise you and thank you, Lord, for all of you ladies who have joined us today for this day of refreshment. We just give glory and honor to God for this platform and that the word of God will go forth. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, to glory to God. God. We love you. Thanks for being with us, sisters. If you're not already signed up for our emails, please go to ccrno.org. You can sign up uh, there. We like to send out inspiration during the, the week, but we also like to announce our upcoming events, and we've got a lot of them coming. Also on our website, if you're so led, you can make a donation for the ongoing support of our ministry. We're an office of the Archdiocese of New Orleans, Louisiana, but we're a self-supporting office, which means we have to raise all of our own revenue. And with the conference canceled this year and no opportunity to gather people together, we've really been reliant on the generosity and goodness of people like you. You'll see there how you can make a donation directly at ccrno.org or on PayPal or sending in a check. And we thank you with all of our hearts for your generosity. Listen, we've got a lot of wonderful events coming up and we'd really like you to join us. August 29th, we have our annual Fresh Fire. Deacon Larry Oney and his wife Andy are gonna be speaking on the kingdom, the power and the glory. Then at the end of January, we have our annual Holy Spirit Women's Retreat and we have two marvelous ministers of God's love. 
Father Richard McAleer, who has a charismatic gift of healing, which is very deep and very profound. We also have Barbara Heil, a convert to Catholicism, who's a woman on fire with the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And then, God willing, we'll have our annual conference. You know, we've learned to say God willing because this year the conference was all planned. People were, people were registered, and at the last minute, it all had to be abandoned. So, God willing, next year, March 19th to 21st, in Metairie at Copeland Tower, we're going to have the theme, The Lion of Judah Conquers, with Peter Herbeck, Sean Tobin, Mary Bielski, uh, and our own Andy Oni, and the newly uh, um, elected, appointed Bishop David Toops, who has been with us at our, on our women's retreat. Sisters, we are eager to keep in touch with you. Uh, you've met Dr. Sean Tobin through his beautiful music. Sean has a website too. He's a clinical psychologist. You can hear his music there and also some of his very profound teachings on Our Lady. And we in the Women's Retreat Team and at CCRNO are entrusted, consecrated to Jesus through Mary. And so let's go forward. The Lord told us deeper and higher. He wants to bring us deeper. He wants to bring us higher. And we trust him to do that because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God bless you. A kiss from all of us. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Reach out your hand.